Hello everyone and welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and this is my video podcast about all the crafty things that I like to do, uh, like knitting, crocheting, and spinning from my home in Tacoma, Washington. So welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I'm so glad you could join me today. Speaking of which, today is Monday, April 13th of 2020. And here in Tacoma, it is warm. It is warm. I'm on the second floor, the craft room, and I have the window open. So apologies if a very noisy ve vehicle drives by at any point, which happens quite often. Uh, but we will deal with it as it comes. <laughs> but I have the window open, hoping to get some fresh air in the house, which uh, will be the first time I've opened that window this calendar year uh, up here in the craft room. So uh, it's a monumentous day, in my opinion, when I get to open up the windows and let fresh air in. Uh, and today is definitely one of those days. It's really warm in here and by really warm I mean like 70 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> so take that as you will uh, to my friends in Texas I'm sure it's hotter there I haven't even checked the weather but I'm positive it's hotter there uh, and I feel for you I've been really fortunate uh, to have the heater and the AC turned off for the past few days I haven't had to run any of those appliances and it's been very nice although I did turn the heater on in the house this morning because it did get down excuse me to freezing last night um, just checking my phone uh, my husband Michael is downstairs uh, doing a live session with his students and I told him to text me if he needed anything it wasn't him it was an email <laughs> but uh, yeah so we are both teaching from home, doing live sessions with our students through video, um, and it's been very interesting. Yes. So, uh, yes, I I am a I'm a teacher. <laughs> I don't know why that was so awkward to say, uh, but I'm a college professor. I teach math, and uh, so does my husband. He teaches math at the college level and we're both teaching from home and having to coordinate our schedules so that we're not eating up the internet at the same time um, kind of things. So uh, yeah, I'm very fortunate to have, um, we have a few rooms in this house where we can close the door and shut ourselves away uh, like the craft room here so I have the door closed and I'm up here chatting with you guys uh, and Michael's downstairs in the dining room which is a more open area but he's down there chatting with folks uh, and I can't hear him it helps I have the window open so I have some a white noise here but um, yeah so we've been kind of utilizing like the craft room up here and the dining room downstairs and kind of just trading and switching sometimes he'll be up here uh so yeah that's what we're doing and trying to keep privacy in mind um when chatting with students because that, that is very important um so yes i'm up here he's down there he's working i'm chatting it's it's life right so I am very uh, fortunate to be able to work from home and still get my regular paycheck. And I know not everyone is able to do that. So if you are one of those people that's being really severely affected by current events like COVID-19, um, I feel for you. I really do. Um, it's something I'm trying to keep in mind when chatting with my students because they have most of them have minimum wage jobs in the restaurant industry um they're waitresses and waiters and bartenders and yeah so just keeping all of that in mind <laughs> of everything that's going on and so i don't want to talk too much about it because i don't know about you guys but i find 
knitting podcasts to be a nice um, sort of escape from my everyday life. So it's a chance to hear from someone and maybe chat with them in the comments about um, one of my great passions and that's knitting and being creative and channeling that creative energy into something positive and impactful and and good and so um that's what i want this podcast to be about today and and every time i make an episode so i don't want to dwell on the negatives and what's going on but i do also want to say that it's going on and it's unavoidable it's up front in everyone's life and it's the elephant in the room, and I can't go on without saying something about it, but I don't want to dwell. So, yeah, I am, I am working from home. I am setting up my classes online and uh, just trying to be very, very organized so that um, my students know what they're supposed to be working on, how they're supposed to be working on it, uh, the goals of the assignment and, and things like that. So um, I normally teach class in person in the classroom where I can physically be near my students. Um, and I'm a, a hands-on teacher who has the students work in groups. Um, and so that's one of the appeals I'm hearing from my students um, that that's one of the reasons they signed up for my class. And so uh, it's difficult to adapt that to an online setting. So that's my work struggle is trying to create my in-classroom presence online. And that's tough to do, and it's tough to do last minute. So um, I'm trying, and that's really all I can do. And my students are being very patient and understanding, and I really appreciate that. So if you are a college student, I hope that everything is working out for you as well. Um, and I hope that the job market swings back very soon so that our um, college graduates this year um, don't have a bunch of trouble moving into their careers. So, yes, wishful thinking, hopeful thoughts, um, all the positive energy, and um, all of that is going out to you. So, now that I've dabbled on about that, uh, let me talk about some admin stuff with the podcast and what's going on. So I want to remind you guys that the D Hard House podcast, the D Hard House Sock Knit Along is still going on. That is running through the end of this month, April 30th. And that is, excuse me, to knit a pair of socks, uh, a pattern designed by me called Waxing and Waning. I will pop a picture in over here. Why is it hard for me to remember that the camera is just the mirror image of me? whatever. Uh, there's a picture over there of the pattern. It's called Waxing and Waning. It's written by me, D Hard House Designs. Uh, with this pattern, you get tutorial videos. So if you are a beginner sock knitter or beginner color work knitter, or you just really like having tutorial videos, those are included in the pattern. Uh, and for, for this knit along, you do not have to finish your socks to be eligible for prizes. So... Uh, all you have to do is participate, and you can participate two ways. You can participate on Ravelry by posting in the D Hard House podcast group, and that Ravelry group is linked down below in the description box for your convenience. You can also participate by posting on Instagram and using the hashtag DHSockCal2020. Uh, so I will be drawing a random winner from the Ravelry thread and a random winner from the Instagram hashtag photos. And last time I checked, I am the only one who has used that hashtag and I don't want to win my own prize. I mean, I do, but <laughs> it seems silly. So please post on Instagram and use the hashtag so I can give prizes away um, to more people. Um, speaking of prizes, 
our knit along is running through the end of April, uh, but keeping in mind current events, COVID-19 and trying to reduce the spread of disease, um, I am doing some research into um, how and when I want to send the prizes out because they are physical items. And while I am not sick and my husband is not sick and we don't feel sick and we're staying home um, and re severely reducing our exposure to other people, um, I don't want to accidentally send a little traveler um, along with the prize and potentially get someone sick. So, I may send out prizes later in the year, um, but I'm doing some research into what I should do to the items before I send them out. Because, like, I have a bag and I have a crochet stuffy and then I've got some notions that I want to add in there, like a tape measure and little things like that. Um... And as much as I can like wipe, I can wipe a lot of those things down with disinfecting wipes. Um, it's not like I can literally wash every inch of the thing. So um, I've heard some things about like putting stuff in the freezer for X amount of time. And so I'm doing some research into that and I'll keep you updated. Uh, but I will be doing something to those prize items to clean them slash kill anything that might be on them before sending them out to our lucky winners. So, yes, that's that. <laughs> I may be putting stuff in the freezer. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll giggle and laugh right now, but if it, if it seriously helps, I will do it. And my husband will just have to deal with it. He's nice like that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the knit along is still going on. You don't have to finish. So if you jump in now, which is April 13th, um, even if you don't finish your socks, as long as you're posting progress pictures or commenting on other pictures, uh, using the hashtag on Instagram, every time you post, it counts as an entry into the drawing. So this is a participation based knit along, which is one of my favorites. Okay, so that's it for administrative kind of stuff. So now what I want to talk about are the things I've been working on. So uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's been one week since I've talked to you guys. Uh, and classes have officially started. So I am actively working again and engaging with students and answering all the emails and stuff. But despite all of that, I have finished two things. Two. I'm so excited. Okay. Let me first show you. I finished um, my second pair of waxing and waning socks. So while we're, while I just spoke about the knit along, uh, yeah, so I modified my pattern <laughs> so that the color work chart um, repeated itself onto the foot, but uh, backwards. So the um, color work here running down the leg, I just worked that color work pattern opposite direction so it waxes and wanes uh, as it goes down the whole sock. So yes, I have finished these. I finished these technically this morning. I did Kitchener Stitch on the toe this morning while enjoying my cup of coffee, uh, but I mostly finished them last night while watching television. So um, yeah, they are finished and they are going to be a gift. Um, and yeah, I'm just super delighted uh, that these are finished. Yay! So I knit these, uh, like I said, it's the waxing and waning pattern. I used US size 1 knitting needles. I used two colors of commercial sock yarn, uh, one in white and the other in navy. And they're both... Uh, Serenity Sock, Premier Yarns, Serenity Sock, white and navy. 
Uh, and yeah. So these are finished and they're going to go in the gift pile and I'm really excited these are done. Excuse me. But what I'm even more excited about finishing is... My Weekender sweater. <laughs> it's finished. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let me just say, I finished this last night. I know. See? I told you I was really productive. I finished this last night? No, I finished this yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, I was doing the tubular bind off on the last sleeve. Yep. Uh, and then I washed it this morning and laid it out to dry um, to block it. And it's still a little bit damp, which is why two reasons I'm not wearing it. The sweater's a little damp and it's hot. <laughs> I guess not hot, but it's warm in here and I didn't want to put on a sweater. But I will put it on in just a second to show you the final result. But yes, it is completely finished. It's got the high-low hem, reverse stockinette, with this slip stitch detail running down the middle. The sleeves are all finished. And um, the sleeves have the tubular bind off. And so does the neck. And then this is knit bottom up. So on the bottom, it has the tubular cast on. Blowing me out. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let me pop this on so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here it is. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me move my hair. So it's totally finished. I threw it on over my t-shirt so you can see my t-shirt because um, it has this wide um, neckline here and um, I just think it looks really nice. So um, it has the high low hem here and I think this hits me in a very nice place so after blocking I did kind of try to stretch it to give it a little more length so that's what I got um, this is meant to be knit with I think she says 10 inches of positive ease in the pattern and I don't know that I have 10 inches of positive ease I think I have a little less than that, but I'm really happy with the result. So I originally cast on the third size and I knit all the way up the body until um, the part where you split for the sleeves and it just seemed like it had too much ease. So I ripped all that out and I knit the second size. And that's what this is. So it's not quite as um, loose as recommended, but I'm happy with the result. So that's what I have. And so yeah, it's got that cl that classic that classic weekender style here. Yeah, well, the one of the features of the pattern. So um, yeah, it's got this detail here. Um, hair keeps getting in the way but essentially you work this ribbing here and then you do this bind off so you get this ridge and it's super cool um the sleeves are a good length so they're a little bit long which is what I wanted uh but I just followed the pattern for the sleeves and she gives you instructions for the decreases and then says knit straight, leaving two inches for the ribbing, right? So, um, but when I finished the decreases, I mean, it's right there. I did not knit straight at all. So it like, it worked out, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with this sweater. So yes, it has that same uh, slip stitch detail in the back and so the easy way to tell the difference between the front and the back is the high-low hem 
<laughs> which is good. Uh, but yeah, so this is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. I knit the second size and the yarn. So I had four skeins, but I only used three. And I have just a tiny ball left of that third skein. So this fourth one uh, didn't get touched at all, which I'm pretty happy about. So the yarn is Queensland Collection Rustic Tweed. Okay, hopefully you can read that. Uh, this is, it's worsted weight yarn and it's a worsted weight pattern. 65% uh, wool, 25% alpaca, 7% acrylic, and 3% viscose. Um, yeah, so, it's just awesome. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Uh, but yeah, I had it laying flat on the table outside on our back porch. What do you call an outside table, like, on your porch or in your backyard? Like, it's not a picnic table. It's got a glass top to it with a hole in the middle for the umbrella to come through. I, I don't know. Anyway, it's that kind of table. <laughs> but uh, I laid this out there flat to dry this morning. Uh, and I had the front side facing up so I could get everything all straightened out. Uh, so the back side is what is still a little bit damp because that was um, down against the table. But uh, yeah, it's, I love it. I'm very happy with it. I did use the recommended needle sizes in the pattern. So I did check my gauge uh, in comparison to the recommended gauge. And the speed limit out there is 30, by the way. 30 miles per hour. There is a reason that there were many days I would come home from work and there would be a police officer sitting, like, right on the other side of our fence. Just sitting there. There is a reason, and I'm assuming that is the reason. I was actually really amazed when going on our walks around our neighborhood. I was really amazed to see how many of those <laughs> underneath the speed limit, you know, speed limit 30, 30 miles per hour. And underneath it is a little like um, radar. It tells you how fast you're going. Um, and I didn't notice those at all when driving. <laughs> but I did notice them when we were walking. <laughs> Anyway, apologies for the noise, but um, what was I saying? I used the recommended needle sizes in the pattern. So there's a needle size for the main part of the knitting and then a different size for the ribbing and then a different size for casting on. Um, and I did use those sizes recommended by the pattern designer. Um, I did check my gauge. I didn't just blindly cast on and my gauge was just slightly off, like half a stitch, one row off. Um, which I did think um, made a big difference when I cast on size three. Because uh, when I ripped out and cast on size two, I think I also like paid more attention to my gauge and so I think when I was knitting it the first time I kind of loosened up a little bit and then the thing just got bigger than intended so but I'm very happy with it um it's not as loose as I thought it was gonna be and initially I was like why did I go down a size what was I thinking it's supposed to be a loose sweater and then after blocking I'm putting it on I'm really happy with it. So I think it's something I can wear at work. Uh, I think it's something I can wear camping. I think it's something I can wear casually, like to Christmas, 
family get togethers, whatever. So I think it's just going to be a really nice, um, a really nice piece to wear. And I am considering this neckline though, like, because I mean, this is the end of my shoulder. This is the end of my shoulder. And here are my, my bra straps for my sports bra. So I don't know. I may want to do a little bit more tightening up here, but we'll see. This is day one after blocking, so just give it a chance. But if I find that this is a problem, then I will probably do something about it. So yeah, I'm very happy, but I'm also very warm. So I'm going to take this off and go back to t-shirt Alicia. Yeah, so I finished socks and a sweater. It's been a very productive week. Um, I have also finished some spinning and conveniently left it in other places of the house. But I did spin up two more skeins of my Coop Worth uh, that I'm spinning up and wanting to make a sweater out of later. So, yep, I finished a couple of those and I'm very happy with the results. Um, the spinning wheel, spinning wheel update. Uh, previously my spinning wheel was clunking. I have an Ashford traditional spinning wheel and it was clunking and my husband and I tried to figure out what was going on and we sort of diagnosed the problem and so I ordered a, a replacement part and we put it back together in the meantime so I could still use it while waiting for the part to arrive and it stopped clunking and I told you guys about that last time and so I thought well maybe I like just found the sweet spot and I bet if I pick up and move my spinning wheel and if I really like mash on the treadle it'll probably like knock it out of that sweet spot right nope it is still just fine so the replacement part is sitting in a box on a shelf in this room uh, <laughs> we haven't put it on because the spinning wheel is silent totally quiet no clunking I don't get it but we have a replacement part in case I need it and yeah seems silly but whatever <laughs> I, I don't know I I don't I don't understand but I'm happy nonetheless I can now spin quietly while we're watching movies uh, and not feel like I'm being the most annoying thing in the room which is really good um yeah so I only have one other project on the needles I have one whip one it's right here in this bag I have one whip no that's a lie I technically have two because I do have that other mitre square blanket excuse me that I'm still working on okay fine I have two. I have two whips. I have a blanket and I have these socks. So I have a pair of just plain stockinette stitch socks on the needles. Um, I'm knitting these for my husband, Michael. Um, he loves the socks I make for him and wants more. And so I'm making more. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd be nice to make just a nice stockinette stitch sock. Just easy peasy, lemon squeezy, on the go kind of sock. So I do have a progress keeper on here uh, to mark where I was last time. So I've put on this much. I was saving this for treadmill knitting, but it has been so nice outside lately that I have not been running on the treadmill. I've been running outside. So I gave myself permission to knit on this, not on the treadmill. <laughs> so I did make a bit of progress. I am using Patton's Croy. I need to put the label in the bag. See, the problem is, is I cast this on, I have no bag until I need one. And then I put it in, and then the label's gone at that point. Um, <laughs> 
but this is Patton's Croy in the Cascade colorway. And then the uh, cuff here is in Patton's Croy in the gray, I think it's called gray marl colorway. Uh, so I'm going to be using this for the heel and toe as well. I have another leftover ball on the shelf, so I won't run out, I promise. Uh, yeah, so the plan was to knit one pair of socks out of this ball, but I think I'm going to use one of those Joann's coupons. You get like 40% off a single item, uh, which is what I did to buy this ball. Uh, actually, I think this one was 50% off. Uh, but I think I'll use another one of those to get a second ball and then that way I can knit him a uh, nice tall socks which will be nice for hiking and camping um, to go in our hiking boots uh, so yeah I think I'll, ni I'll make nice tall ones out of these but yeah this is the first sock uh, so all I have on the needles is this and that blanket, which technically doesn't have knitting needles in it, um, but I'm still working on it. So naturally, after finishing a sweater, I, you know, had to think about what I was going to do next because, you know, that really happy feeling of finishing something and then wanting to channel it immediately into another project. So I would like to cast on... I'm going to see if I can pull it up on my phone to show you. Um, I would like to cast on, actually, I should just put, um, I should just put the picture on the screen because it'll look better. So let me scoot over here so I can put the picture over there. I would like to cast on Dark Water. And I can't remember the designer's name, so I'll put it up here with the picture. Uh, but I purchased this a while ago, and it's a beautiful colorwork sweater. Uh, one of my, like, big, uh, if you could knit anything, what would it be? Uh, like, a big goal to work toward as a knitter, and that's a colorwork sweater. So I've always seen a project like that as something that's challenging that requires a lot of skill and talent and know-how and a lot of understanding of knitting and how it works and so in my mind I've kind of put colorwork sweater up on a pedestal and <laughs> been slowly working toward that so I've been playing around with um, colorwork socks and mittens and small projects like that to build up my skill set with colorwork knitting and then I've also separately been knitting sweaters to build up my confidence with sweater knitting and understanding uh and so finally i want to cast this on so um oh i need to plug my laptop in i noticed my video getting really laggy and that means my laptop battery was dying so i just plugged it in uh but yeah so i want to cast on that sweater and i've decided to use I have, I don't know if you can tell, I have a stash. <laughs> and um, a big part of that stash has been preparing for wanting to knit more sweaters and color work sweaters and whatnot. So I balled up these two skeins yesterday after finishing my sweater and going with that whole mojo vibe. Um, so I have this uh like a denim blue and this heathery gray uh and i would like to use these two together so i'm also trying to think about what color sweaters do i already have like i don't need six gray sweaters <laughs> yes i do but <laughs> i would like to knit um a bunch of colors of sweaters so I can wear them for different occasions and with different outfits um, and not just have like a closet full of gray and black sweaters uh, so I'm going to knit uh, a blue one so I just finished a green one I have a gray sweater with orange I have a like bluish teal short sleeve sweater that I finished I have 
I have a gray cardigan. I have a black and gray fade sweater. I have a solid black sweater. Um, but yes, I mean, I like gray. Uh, so now I'd like to do blue and gray. So these are my yarns. They are, I have the, oh, here they are. Look <laughs> at, they were literally right here. Uh, so these are Cloudborn Fibers Highland Fingering. So the gray is called Gray Heather, and the blue is called Stormy Skies. So these are 100% fine Highland wool. This is 100 grams. In fact, I weighed them. They're both 103 grams according to my scale uh, but in 100 grams you get 494 yards uh, so it is a fingering weight and that's what the pattern calls for so this is as far as I've gotten I've picked out the pattern I picked out the yarn hmm I'm excited so yeah the blue is going to be the main color and the gray is going to be for the color work. Uh, so I have three balls of the blue, which should be enough. I have to decide whether I'm going to knit the second size or the third. Um, because I, last time I measured, have a 40 inch bust. And the second size is like 40.75 inches so I need to remeasure um, to see if that has changed and also decide how snug I want the sweater to be and then I also need to check my gauge <laughs> so to see how that will play in so this is as far as I've gotten I'm in the planning stages the setup stage uh, but I'm very excited about that. I'm going to finally be knitting myself, or knitting period, a color work sweater, which has been a big thing in my mind is like knitter with a capital K would knit that. Uh, and so for me, it's been like this whole, uh, this, this thing I've been working toward, this, I've always wanted to knit that, but I don't feel ready. Uh, and so I've been picking projects to get me ready and now I finally feel ready and that's kind of a big moment and I'm really uh, excited. So that's my plan and I hope to have something to show you in this regard next time. That would be really exciting. Um, another thing that I want to start soon. So first I have, um, spinning plans. So I'm spinning. Let me just, let me just go grab that spinning that I finished that I so conveniently left all over the house. Okay. So I'll only grab one skein <laughs> because the other one is right next to Michael, uh, and his setup. And this one is still a little damp. And so it needs to be drying some more, but uh, this is the Coopworth that I'm spinning up uh, that I want to knit into a sweater. So this is the natural color, and I am I've washed the wool, I've prepped the wool using combs, uh, and then I've spun it. So this is a worsted prep and a worsted spin, and so. I'm very excited about it. It is a two ply yarn. Okay. <laughs> it's just, the lighting and everything is just wonky, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's this nice dark gray color, which I love. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about knitting this up. So, spinning plans. I want to finish spinning all of this coop worth before I start spinning other stuff because once I start spinning other stuff with color, it's gonna be really difficult to go back to just gray. So, <laughs> I don't have, 
that much more to go, to be honest. Um, so I'm just trying to be really on myself about finish the Coopworth shit, finish the Coopworth. Because when I finish spinning the Coopworth, not only will I be able to cast on this sweater, um, but um, I will allow myself to work on spinning some Shetland. Yes, Shetland. Um, and the Shetland, which I briefly showed you guys in a previous episode, I started prepping some of it up, is a nice, lovely, natural white color. So I just popped over to grab it. But I have prepped up some of this. Uh, so I did uh, comb it with my hand combs that my husband made for me out of scrap wood and nails. Don't judge, it's a thing. Uh, but they totally work great. So uh, yeah, it's this beautiful, natural white color and it's soft and gorgeous and I had started um, combing up just a little bit of this because it looked so dirty still and I wasn't sure if I needed to keep washing it some more and so I thought well let me comb it up and see what it looks like like maybe just has stuff in it that needs to fall out still and sure enough that's the case because this is just glorious and of course it'll pick up some things like dog hair so <laughs> but my plan you guys this beautiful natural gray and of course the natural white is beautiful but what i would like to do is dye this and then do some color spinning so i would love to dye some red yellow and blue get the primary colors going and play around with um, blending the color with my combs and my hand cards, uh, blending color in the spinning uh, and things like that. And so just playing around with uh, mixing the primary colors up. So that's my idea of what to do next. I've dyed yarn before, but I haven't dyed fiber. So I'm a little scared, but not that scared. Uh, I'm excited. But like I said, once I start with the color stuff, it's going to be hard to go back to gray. And I don't want to take up my one spinning wheel with um, having to pop between these two different spinning projects. So I'd like to finish this, especially since this is almost done. So yeah. Um, like I said, I've spun up two more skeins. This is one of the two, uh, the bigger one of the two. The other one is downstairs. Uh, but yeah, I am, I'm getting there and I'm keeping track of the yardage of these skeins so that I can plan for an appropriate knitting pattern for the, um, amount of yarn that I have. I'm hoping to make, um, I'd like to have a, a long cardigan that's almost like a jacket, but I'm afraid I won't have enough yardage for that. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I have to finish the spin first to figure out how much yarn I have, but yeah, that's the plan. So of course I plan for all of this and then <laughs> So, last week, it was a week ago, I was sitting down to record last week's episode, and I was going through my phone, and I saw a post of some more fiber, <laughs> and I bought it. Long story short. It's in this box right here. Let me just grab it. Uh, yeah, so I may have bought a fleece of Rambouillet because I wanted to. <laughs> and it was on sale. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is seven pounds of Rambouillet. And I have not taken it out of the bag or the box. Um, but... Oh my gosh, it looks awesome. I can see a little bit of poo in there, but 
not a big deal. I'm used to that now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I ordered this. Um, I guess I can sit down in my chair now, but yes, I have seven pounds here of gloriousness. So I ordered that from Cactus Hill Farm and it arrived in a matter of days, which is awesome and amazing. Uh, I have been watching on Facebook posts from them of beautiful fleeces at really good prices and I've just told myself like I, I don't have time for that right now I don't have the money for that right now um, someday someday and I've been keeping my eye on things and then they posted this this was seven pounds of Ramboulet from a single sheep for $20. What? <sighs> yeah. So I jumped on it. I jumped on it and I bought it and it's here and it's amazing. And shipping was really reasonable. I think I told you guys um, shipping is the main reason why I don't jump on sales like that. Um, anyway, so shipping is the main reason why I haven't been jumping on sales like that is because it doubles, triples the price and then all of a sudden a $20 item is close to a hundred and then it's like, oh, okay, this is a different price point than what I was originally thinking. Uh, but shipping was less than $20. So it didn't double the cost. Anyway, so if you haven't heard of Cactus Hill Farm, you should check them out. Um, they post cute pictures and videos of their sheep. They have really good quality products from what I've seen on their website uh, and from reviews. And I'm excited to be able to try one of those out. Um, I'm very happy so far with the speed in shipping. Like I said, I got here in a matter of days. Um, they sent me tracking information. It was really awesome. So, so far a really good experience and I'm excited. So I have Coopworth, I have Shetland, and then I'm going to try Rambouillet. So I'm trying out all these. Oh, and I have Merino, 100% uh, Merino, which I'm spinning on my Turkish drop spindle. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm trying out all the things and just loving, loving the craft, loving my life. Um, I'm really having fun with the, with, uh, fiber processing and creating yarn and that whole process. Um, so I'm excited to also be playing around with the color. I think that'll add a fun aspect. So, um, yeah, that's my plan. And those are my acquisitions. I got a sheep in the mail, basically. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that, that is it for the crafting stuff. Um, life is good. We are staying safe. We are staying home. We are only going out when we have to. Uh, we are enjoying walks around our neighborhood and I'm enjoying runs around our neighborhood. Although I can tell you I'm getting sick of the hills. Uh, it is very hilly here. Very hilly. Um, which is really difficult. So I need to find a flat place to go for runs that's nearby. Um, because we're still not allowed to go to any of the parks or trails around here. So, um, like there's a, there's a quite a few, um, 
paved paths for people to walk, run, and bike on. Um, and they're, you know, they go through the city and they go through the country and just kind of in between all of that. And um, those are really nice to go out on walks and runs. Uh, but we're not allowed to use those because it funnels people into close quarters. Uh, so I need to find like a flat road somewhere around here to go running on because my calves and my shins are dying. <laughs> they are dying. And um, I'm trying to slowly increase my distance. Um, but it's it's hard when it just means now I get to climb the whole hill instead of half of it. Um, uh, yeah, so that that's the only complaint I have is that the hills around here make are part of what make this place really beautiful. Uh, but it really sucks when I'm running. So there's that. <laughs> But otherwise, uh, life is good. The weather's beautiful. Um, I have, my garlic is doing really well out in the raised garden beds. I have lettuce and tomato plants started here in the house uh, and they're doing really well. So they're gonna get um, a few more weeks inside uh, just because it is still getting, like this morning when I woke up, it was 34 degrees Fahrenheit, so only two degrees away from freezing. Uh, and I'm not sure if it did actually dip down to freezing last night, uh, but I'm just not able to plant things outside yet, which I did make sure to research beforehand. And April 16th is the projected last potential day of frost. <laughs> but... Um, Based on when I planted the lettuce and tomatoes, they'll get a few more weeks inside before they get transplanted outside. And I'll be putting the tomatoes in another raised garden bed. Uh, last year I had a tomato plant when I was living in Texas and I had it in a pot in the backyard and the roots actually went through the holes of the pot down into the ground. Uh, and so I couldn't move the thing, so. <laughs> that tomato plant was massive. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be putting my tomato plants in the one of the raised garden beds. The lettuce plants I'm going to put in um, coffee cans. <laughs> so I've been watching um, other YouTube channels about gardening and homesteading and suggestions and composting and all those things. Um, and one of the gentlemen had a whole row of lettuce plants that he was planting in um, coffee cans and tub uh, gallon tubs that ice cream come in and uh, and I thought well that's a really good use for those uh, containers so that's my plan to do that uh, we are renting this home so I don't want to install any new garden beds or anything like that um, because I'd have to get permission of the owner and then, um, things like that. So I'm just not going to do it. So, uh, the garden beds will only house a few things and then everything else that we want to plant will go in containers. Uh, and that's fine with me. So that's what we're doing. But yeah, I'm excited. So <sighs> spring brings new life and new opportunities and so does the current situation in the world new new things and new opportunities so i hope you are staying safe and that you are well and that you are enjoying your craft whatever it may be so until i see you again which will hopefully be next week happy crafting